welcome to another video. Today we we're talking about one of my absolute favorite, favorite things to talk about in terms of witchcraft, and that is agency. Um, when I kind of started writing down the attributes and the kind of uh, manifesto more or less for whatever Lightbringer Rituals was, one of the main things that I came up with is agency is doctrine. Um, it's something that I'm incredibly passionate about and actually so much of um, witchcraft and my witch practice has to do with the idea of power, reclaiming power, um, stepping into your power when it's been taken away by other people. I think there's so much in witchcraft that centers around that. Um, and is also a huge reason as to why so many people over, you know, the eons of time have gravitated towards this practice is because it is a way to get your power back. And very frequently it resonates the most with people whose power have been taken away. So the reason why I wanna talk about this uh, is that I've seen a lot of times that when, whether someone is entering witchcraft for the first time or, um, are going through really hard times of uncomfortability and strife, there is this tendency to lean a little too heavily into others. And when I say others in this case, I mean books, uh, tarot cards, readers, um, you name it. There is this tendency to want to get your, outs your answers from outside of you. And May I just say up front, there is nothing wrong with that. I think there's so many different instances where like help is needed. <laughs> I see very frequently that people tend to default to outside of themselves for answers rather than listening inward and listening to themselves, like themselves, like their soul self, so to speak. I think that witchcraft in general and honestly religion and spirituality in general, when you boil it down, is about connection to yourself and connection to your power. What it is that makes you feel alive and centered and successful and juicy and what makes you feel in your body as if you are living in the present. However you get there, how, whichever road, whatever whatever language you use, whatever spirituality or religion you use, I think is amazing. I think at the root though, it is about connection to both yourself and what divine is. And in witchcraft, I do think there is this tendency to lean towards doctrine because it's, you know, we are humans having this really human experience that very frequently is very uncomfortable. You have no idea what's going on. You have no idea what tomorrow brings. There's so much uncertainty that's built into this human experience that of course it makes total sense that you want answers. You want everything to be as solid as possible. Definitely not discrediting that. But one of the main things I think that's missing about the converse, in the conversation of witchcraft is this idea that you are your own agency that very frequently you have the answers within you. I see it so frequently when I do tarot readings that people come to me with questions and really all I kind of do is just say back to them exactly what they're, they were thinking or what they were feeling in their body. I just help give them words. And that's like most of the time that's what happens because we have just been taught by patriarchy, by capitalism, by this white supremacist mindset that like we can't actually trust what's inside of us. We have to go to outside, uh, outside sources for answers. And so in witchcraft, I think it's something that is left out a lot is that witchcraft can be used to connect to yourself, to feel into your power, and it can also be used to reclaim your power back. So much of what I believe in and so much of what I teach and so much of what the shadow path that I, that I kind of have encapsulated in a lot of the classes that I've taught is about the idea that you are working in tandem with divinity that it is not just this thing where you snap your fingers and things appear. It is not just something where you like, you know, put oil on a candle, cover it in flowers, burn it, and then be done. There's so much magic in the actual earthly participation um, in your own, in your own existence, in your own agency, in your own practice. I think the underlying thing that I'm talking about here is kind of a change in the way that we think of magic. Um, I think because, you know, you know, I spoke of, you know, his, more history and 101 stuff last time. Um, but I think we have this idea that like magic is, you know, the magic that we see in the movies where you snap your fingers and things happen. Um, and it's not that I'm trying to be a pessimist, 
but um, it's that I think <laughs> my feet are a little bit too on the ground. That's not the reality for a lot of people. And so in this idea of agency as doctrine, in this idea of just like what magic is, at least to me and what I wish to teach and what I want to encourage in other people is that magic is is less the idea of making something appear out of thin air and more of making sure actively readily that we are the captain of our own ship um and magic to me is you know announcing a destination but then in that earthly practice in the in the daily magic that we work every single day in the agency that we have every single day what we're more or less doing is moving the ship like degree by degree to make sure that we're hitting the correct destinations i think that is a better situation and a better theory of magic than the idea that like if we deserve it then we'll get it or if we ask for it we'll get it which i mean look is a thing you, you won't get anything if you don't ask for it, look. But I think there's a tendency to bypass the context and bypass our agency as humans and the capacity and the, and the fact that we can actually do a lot of magic ourselves in the form of being incredibly ourself and feeling really full of power and um, everything that makes us who we are as like a soulful human being having a human being experience. So when you're in these moments of just like incredible uncomfortableness and you're wanting to seek external validation, but um, you're not sure if that's actually gonna guide you in the right direction, where you wanna kind of sit and listen and understand that the, the decisions and choices that you make have to come from inside your soul. Here's some cards. Here's some cards that I think are really great allies. So three of, ooh, Three of Wands, I think is really fantastic. I think he has a great story. The Two of Wands right before him um, shows the same person holding, standing on this cliff as well, which is in front of a bunch of water, holding a globe. And so that card is very much about like dr dream big. What is it you want to do? What is it that lights you up? Dream as big as you absolutely can. So in this circumstance, if we're in this story and this is like a gentleman merchant, I don't know. Um, Okay, so this gentleman merchant's like, okay, so I know that there are spice trade. There's a new spice that's going to be like really successful and I wanna go out and I wanna invest in it and I send my ships out and then he has to wait. And that is the three of wands is you are, you've decided your destination, right? However, there's time, time has to pass. And so three of wands to me, to my interpretation is, what can you do to make sure like you're here now and here is where your goal is, what can you do to slowly prepare yourself so that when that destination arrives, you are ready. You are ready for it. It's about claiming your agency instead of just releasing it to somebody else, to releasing it to, to divinity to kind of have show up in your place. Another card, another card that I really like is the Eight of Pentacles. This is the mastery card, the apprentice to master card. Um, the way I actually ex was explained this card, um, I'm not actually sure where I read it, but more or less there's this person who's sitting carving these pen pentacles, just carving and carving and carving. They're, you know, it's a long laborious process and he's a beginner, so like, or they're a beginner, I don't want a gender. Um, and so, these are slowly, painstakingly going by, but the only way to become a master is by doing it. You have it, you might feel like you wanna to cheat, to cut corners, to like learn how to do it faster because you're so impatient with where you are currently. But Eight of Pentacles is inviting you to actually like sit in that, sit in that learning energy, that student energy, because it's only by doing the work will you actually get to that destination. Another really great card, Justice. Oof. This is a rough one. So how I read justice, um, I'm thankful for the definition um, that I got from Lindsay Mack, highly recommend, that justice is the be here now card. What are you ignoring in your life? So like, if you're like, okay, I want to pull in a love, right? I wanna pull in my soulmate. I, want, I, wanna, I want that to come into my life. Justice goes, all right, honey, are you ready to have a partner? 
If a partner moves into your, if you find someone who moves into your house, are you actually ready to have someone in your space? Have you dealt with your abandonment issues? Um, how would you actually feel if, if a partner came into your life? Would you run away from them because they saw you so clearly? That is the justice card. It is the context of witchcraft. It's really just being true and honest. It's about realizing that the bone is broken and you must reset it. You know what I mean? Like it's just like true, honest truth. The vertical, um, the vertical sword in this card, definitely like that's whenever you see that in tarot, that's like truth. Lastly, um, this wonderful card, the Five of Pentacles, is another really great ally. The story of this card, more or less, is that these gentlemen are are without a house, without a home, without shelter, and so they're desperately looking through um, through the snow. They're trying to find some place to go, and they don't even see the church behind them that would offer them shelter. So, the main kind of theme of this of this card is more or less desperation. It's you know, you're trying to manifest that dream job and you need it, you need, it. you need, you absolutely need it. You're kind of freaking out about it a little bit. You start to think about like the money and you start to think about like, oh my God, what if I don't get it? You start to kind of ruminate and spin on your own feelings and your own feelings of just like, oh shit. And instead of kind of taking the manifestation magic route of being just kind of like, no, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna ignore all of that. I'm going to like keep my spirits high. We're gonna suck it up. We're not gonna think about it. It's being a little bit more graceful with that. One of the best images I think of, of this card, I think is the um, mother piece deck, which I, I don't use personally, but I love this card and it's just a woman making tortillas. Also, I also this is an interpretation that did come from Lindsay Mack as well. So let me give credit where credit's due. But I love the idea of that, that when, you're, when we're in these moments of desperation and panic and wanting to get out and, and being too consumed by context, one of the best things that can help us is repetitive motions, things that are automatic, things that will feed us eventually, things that will make sure that we are kind of itemizing and doing the things that get us to our goal, making sure that we're kind of still being in our body, even though desperation is inviting us out of it and inviting us strictly into our mind, into very swords territory. So those are cards that I definitely recommend as allies. If you're finding that, you know, you want to make sure context stays in your, in, in, in the spell work that you do. In this conversation of positivity and wanting to bring in beautiful things into your life and wanting to manifest beautiful things and wanting magic to kind of bring things into, into your life from a place of, um, from a place of your own power and seeing yourself in your full, beautiful essence, right? Having these pieces of magic and having this the spell work and having like, okay, I want to call in love. I want to call in these really beautiful things. Um, it's less about offering you an out and praying for like something to come into your life. And it's more about offering you a buoy when you're in the ocean. So like in moments when you're feeling really uncomfortable, um, moments where you're just like, I have no idea what's next. I have no idea what to think. I have no idea what to do with this relationship. Um, instead of offering that buoy to somebody else and then using that other person as a buoy to like keep you from drowning, what if you then was able to kind of cull up your own agency in that circumstance? Very frequently when someone's like wanting to go to an external source, um, they feel incredibly uncomfortable and they want the answers to give in to them. But in those circumstances, very frequently, what I, what I experience, like as a tarot reader who kind of receives that information, it's very frequently, get quiet, listen, listen to what your body has to say. You do not need to make a decision right at this moment. You are not drowning, it's okay, just breathe. These are very human feelings, that's okay. And so one of the main things that I wanna kind of have at the end of this is that you are enough. The knowledge that you have inside of your body is enough. If you feel like you need to change, if you feel like you need to adjust, if you feel like something isn't sitting right, or if you feel like all of the things you've built until this point actually don't fit anymore, that is enough. And so if you head towards external circumstances, question why or why does it scare you to have 
as so much power to be able to change your own life, even if it's just one degree at a time. Um, I think that's one of the most important things in magic. And I think that's one of the most perfect and beautiful. And it's one of the biggest things that I want to reiterate in my practice and the things that I teach is that we have way more power than we are ever given credit for. Even in the darkest of circumstances, we have the power to move and to get up and to wish and to hope. And witchcraft should support that, that agency and that power instead of make us feel not enough because our questions aren't answered. What if your knowledge was enough? Thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Please subscribe if you want to see more of my content. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lightbringer Rituals, and I also stream witchcraft video games on Twitch at Edgar Allan Pone. They will be on the screen after this. On that note, I will see you next time.